Okay. Okay. So, uh, guys, today's topic so close to my heart. Well, I I lost thirty seven kgs uh, using functional medicine guidelines, and uh, before I discovered functional medicine, I had so many failed attempts at losing weight. It's only through this particular methodology that I lost weight, and then once we started working with clients, I I, I think cumulatively. Um, within within the community for all the people who've lost weight with us, it must be around three and a half, four thousand kgs of weight loss just because of uh, the work we've done at iThrive. So this is a topic that's very close to my heart, especially because I see a lot of people struggling with uh, weight, extra weight. There are so many different emotions that are attached to weight loss often people who are stuck in this loop of attempting to try uh, try to lose weight are uh, usually circling around the emotions of guilt and shame and fear with food so the goal today is to kind of just bring some light to the subject of weight loss and help you decode what uh, the weight loss journey should all be about uh, why do we do these sessions once a month? We be calling these our uh, decoding sessions. So we decode one health issue at a time. Is because through the last three years of the work that we've been doing with so many clients and the kind of uh, research and development we do internally, the uh, level of research that a team does, we actually have developed a really vast knowledge base about all sorts of chronic diseases that people experience. And... Um, we just want to share our knowledge, right? Like at least once a month, if we can come and put the knowledge that we have gathered out for people to kind of uh, use and then take it on in their own lives. That's what we are really attempting to do. So that's why we're doing these monthly uh, decoded sessions. So welcome again, everyone. Let me just quickly go back and share my slides and uh, let's take it from there. Um, if you have any questions, please put them, like as I'm going through the presentation, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. And I will have about five minutes towards or 10 minutes towards the end of the session where I'll look at the questions and answer them. And uh, let's get started. We have just an hour and we have so much to share here. Okay. Um, give me a minute. Let me just hide the black thing on top. All right. So today's talk is about weight loss being decoded uh, and it aligns totally with our vision of creating healthier, happier, lifestyle disease-free communities across the world every single day because we don't really want anyone to be sick. We, we just want a world where people are disease-free and like waking up in the morning full of energy and fulfilling their soul's purpose on this planet. So where do we begin, right? And why are we even talking about weight loss? If you see uh, the statistics we have india which is on number three when it comes to the countries with the most obese people uh nearly 2.1 uh, like nearly 30 percent of the world's population is obese or overweight and now what is really worrying is uh, one in every three children uh between 2 to 19 are being considered overweight or obese right so the statistics were very, very different earlier, but uh, obesity is fast becoming a really big problem. And we look at why obesity actually is an issue, right? It's not just about aesthetics. It's not just about how you look. There's actually clinical consequences of carrying extra weight. So that's something we're going to look at as well. But how do we really define obesity? One way is, of course, the body mass index uh, at a really super, uh, like, if someone's got a body mass of 30 to 35, we could consider them obese. But uh, since, like, why did we put this up here? This is one of the most commonly used parameters to check if you're overweight or obese. However, uh, uh, if you're just lightly overweight, the body mass index might not really be a too accurate descriptor because sometimes just having extra muscle mass can increase your BMI and you might, like, just think you're in the obese range. Uh, a better way to check your fat percentage or whether you're really clinically obese or not uh, would be to use measures like skin pull calipers. But assuming, give me one minute. Okay. Assuming uh, anyone who's part of this conversation is really interested in like figuring out 
how to lose weight for themselves or figuring out how to help their clients lose weight or figuring out how to kind of um help somebody in the family or a loved one lose weight we we are we are really having this conversation for those people um what are the root causes of obesity well a couple of them are kind of commonly known uh, most people know that eating fast processed foods uh, junk sugary foods do lead to excess weight um because these foods often have very very high amounts of calories and not just calories a lot of these foods are super inflammatory and then that inflammation really triggers uh, more fat storage and excess weight um the second thing is like i i'm not a pro believer of the calories in calories out model that okay you just cut down on calories and you'll not gain weight however being sedentary like not moving enough is a sure fire way of accumulating extra weight third is stress um how does stress really contribute to obesity well multiple things right so one is stress and the entire imbalance of hormones which we are going to look at but stress kind of causes increased cortisol uh, release and that cortisol itself can trigger uh, excess accumulation of fat and deposition of fat secondly if we have a lot of mental emotional stress uh, some of us turn to food to kind of deal with that stress i was one of those people um, and like food kind of releases a lot of uh, feel good chemicals and you kind of forget about the stress you numb yourself so stress is both like physiologically what it does in terms of the hormones secondly what it does to your eating habits in both ways stress actually is a double whammy uh, it it kind of um creates a lot of problems uh sleep also so uh not getting enough sleep also has been reported to increase weight but um, before we go there actually into sleep i just want to talk more about the hormones because being able to look at your blood work and see most people know that fast food most people know that sedentary lifestyles most people knows that stress triggers weight gain this is common knowledge you google and you'll find this what i want to keep the focus on this evening is also how we use deeper information from the body like hormones and um your insulin levels to figure out what's really going on now if your endocrine system which is the system that produces hormones if that is experiencing stress it could be because of toxins it could be because of infections it could even be because of deficiencies if your um, endocrine system which is the system that makes hormones if it's um, producing less hormones what it can do is it can completely mess the hormones that control appetite that control fat deposition and that control fat regulation so leptins are one kind of hormones that are produced by fat cells that you know kind of signal and tell you it's time to stop eating you can like you're full now a lot of people because of um the endocrine system getting disrupted or because of toxins because of inflammation in a lot of people that leptin is not really um communicating as well as it should and then your cells can actually uh, start becoming leptin resistant and um that communication that's supposed to go to your brain that okay you're full you can stop eating doesn't happen and that can result in you actually eating larger portion sizes than you need second is insulin a very very important hormone when it comes to weight control what happens with insulin is insulin is a uh, hormone that uh, it's it's literally like a key okay so your cells open up to insulin and as your cells open up to insulin glucose that has come from your food which is like sugar right like your fasting blood sugar what you measuring is glucose so once insulin opens up the keys of your cell glucose kind of goes in and then your body is able to make energy using that glucose so insulin is a key that opens the lock for glucose if your cells become insulin resistant what happens is the glucose from your blood stream whatever glucose has been released from the food you eaten from the carbs you eaten that glucose is unable to enter the cells because the cells self like you know that insulin can't go inside the lock only that lock has gotten filled with uh, grease and the key can't enter that so because of that because the key can't enter and unlock 
the cell all the glucose is uh, floating around when that extra glucose is floating around in your blood stream your body knows that just glucose on its own is dangerous it can damage a lot of cells so what the body starts doing is it starts converting this extra glucose into triglycerides or fat and starts storing it in the body so people think obesity leads to diabetes it's the other way around insulin resistance which is the root cause of diabetes is what triggers obesity and often by the time your diabetes is detected you already ended up storing a lot of glucose in the form of fat and that's why you will see that diabetes and obesity kind of happen around the same time uh age related obesity um so what happens is as as we chronologically age uh the hormones in our body actually start changing um like when estrogen levels drop or when uh, progesterone levels go up because of all these hormonal changes or because also like we are losing muscle mass as we age um there is increased fat deposition that happens but this is not necessarily the truth for everyone it's not like just because you're aging you're going to become obese there are ways to counter that right so it's just one of the causes that because you're aging and because the uh, hormones in your body are changing there's a possibility of higher fat storage cortisol uh, this is the stress hormone that's released it's at the bottom of the screen i don't know if you can see that but cortisol what it does is again cortisol triggers um, it's 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 released in the body when we experience stress it's it's a very natural mechanism cortisol is not the bad guy but because of our impaired ability to deal with stress right like how we perceive and respond to stress is kind of broken cortisol starts damaging our body how does it damage our body one of the ways is when cortisol is released it activates more production of glucose in the liver when that happens that extra glucose floats around in the blood stream also too much cortisol in the blood can trigger insulin resistance it can also trigger leptin resistance so a lot of biochemistry going on there i don't want to get to technical but excess stress because of the influence of cortisol can trigger um both leptin and insulin resistance can trigger excess glucose in the blood stream and through that then it can over time lead to obesity also um thyroid right like the thyroid is not functioning well thyroid is something that uh, controls your entire metabolism in the body so um if your thyroid is dysfunctional especially if you are in a hypothyroid kind of a place right which means your thyroid is functioning less optimally than it should it's going to slow down your metabolism and once your metabolism slows down it is going to increase fat deposition and you are going to have higher uh, fat mass in your body we've seen this so many times with so many of our patients that the minute we fix their thyroid issues their body automatically starts losing weight like the weight just starts disappearing this is also what happened in my own case i had both uh, insulin resistance which we looked at here i had also uh, an autoimmune thyroid condition called hashimotos and my thyroid was uh, working slower than it should so i had kind of over time see of course i was also eating bad food because i was in an emotionally bad place i was depressed and i was using food as my coping mechanism but despite eating clean after i kind of worked on my mind i still did not lose weight and then it's only after i um, started understanding what was really going on with my internal health is when the weight loss happened so um it's really important to understand what is at the root right so we spoke of cortisol we spoke of insulin we spoke of leptin resistance and i just wanted to quickly talk about the thyroid and how it can contribute to weight gain if your thy thyroid is working slower than it should your metabolism slows down if your metabolism slows down your body is going to increase fat deposition okay the next reason why someone could be gaining weight is because of a liver dysfunction okay so your liver is one of the most underrated organs in the uh, body i would say like so much focus on the heart so much focus on the brain no one's really talking about the liver and how much amazing work it does right so the liver 
um, is your uh, detoxification space. The liver is also where a lot of now different. Now I'm in like eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I know. Yeah, beautiful. Our it is mute. The mind is very illa. Very illa. Yeah. So the liver is the place where a lot of uh, nutrients get recombined to form new forms of nutrients, like amino acids go and become new peptide molecules. Uh, the liver is also where a lot of storage of nutrition happen, like iron and even glucose get stored there in the form of glycogen. So the liver is like this really super amazing organ, but the liver can become dysfunctional. Now, why would the liver just become dysfunctional? Very high levels of blood glucose because of insulin resistance can create uh, fatty liver. Too many toxins in your bloodstream can create fatty liver or can cause uh, the liver to start just becoming dysfunctional. Consuming alcohol creates liver dysfunction. Um, not getting the right nutrients, like not providing the, the liver with the raw material it needs can create dysfunction. Uh, if you have a chronic infection, like a lot of people get hepatitis in their early um, childhood, like jaundice, right? They get that and that infection is never really cleared off from their liver. And because that's not happened, um, like chronic underlying infection is there in the liver and that's really making the liver more and more dysfunctional. Now, the liver is the space for where a lot of the regulation of the fat metabolism happens, right? Like whatever fat metabolism pathways are there, the regulation of that happens primarily via the liver. If the liver is not functioning well, if there is a very high uh, load on the liver, even that can cause increase in uh, weight, right? So we've seen, again, like with thyroid, we've seen that the minute we help people improve their liver function, the weight immediately starts dropping. The next reason is adrenal stressors. So adrenals are these two glands that sit above your kidneys and they are primarily responsible for the stress response that we have. So any kind of stress, right? Your psychological stress, your physiological stress. So I, I actually take the module on mind-body medicine in the academy and we speak about stress over seven sessions. So any kind of stress will create an excess demand from the adrenals to produce adrenaline to deal with the stress all of the time. If your adrenal gets um, dysfunctional because of this excess demand continuously, what happens is your body goes into this fight or flight kind of a response. That is a stress response. And often in stress, the body starts um, holding on to as much energy as it needs because in the future, it's not sure it's going to get the energy it might need to deal with the stressor. It's like when the lockdown happened uh, and the first time the lockdown was announced, what most people did was they quickly went to the store and loaded their carts with so much food because they were not sure if um, the, the food would be available or the stores would be open or not, right? So the first response to that lockdown in human beings was to go to grocery stores, load up their cart. Load. Like I, I remember people buying five, five liters of sanitizer and stuff like that, right? So that's what the body also does. If it's, if it's experiencing chronic stress, it's going to assume that it needs a lot of energy in the future also to deal with the stress. And that energy comes in the form of the fat that it is capable of storing, right? Like fat is stored energy. The body is not mad for storing fat. It's really not. Everything that the body does is protective in nature. Even if weight gain is happening, it is protective in nature. So if you're experiencing chronic stress, not just mental stress, but even physical stress, right? Like because of... Uh, uh, inflammatory foods because of deficiencies, because of to toxins. Uh, if you're having like way too much caffeine, if you're overexerting yourself, if you're not sleeping enough, right? So many of these things actually lead to stress. And that stress the body deals with, like trying to hold on to as much energy as it needs for the future. And that's what results in weight gain. Toxins. Uh, apart from what the toxins can do to the liver and create a liver dysfunctions, toxins also on their own trigger weight gain because a lot of toxins that come from the environment, like look at, look at the list of toxins here. Most of them are environmental toxins and most of the environmental toxins that we are exposed to are fat-soluble toxins. 
So when they enter your body, right? Like let's say you're somebody who keeps getting your clothes dry cleaned very often. All of the um, petrochemicals that are used in dry cleaning, their residues are left in your clothes. Now, when you wear these clothes, those residues get absorbed by your skin and they enter your bloodstream. Um, if you're eating a lot of big fish, right? Like these uh, sharks and like tuna and big uh, uh, kingfish, like huge surmai, these fish often have a lot of mercury in them and that mercury through the food chain can go and like start floating around in your bloodstream. Uh, if you're eating food that's conventionally grown with pesticides and chemicals and fertilizers, through the food chain, again, you're sending in so many toxins into your system. Now, once these go into your system, your body has to find a way to deal with them. If your detox pathways are working well, your body is able to detox these toxins. But in most of us, the detox pathways are impaired because we're not even getting the nutrients we need to enable detox. Or the um, number of toxins that are coming from the environment are so overwhelming that your body is just not able to detox fast enough. So your body has a strategy, like most of these are fat soluble, right? What the body does, it starts trapping these toxins in fat block molecules and it starts storing them so that it won't go and create more harm. Because if the toxins reach your brain, if your toxins reach your bone marrow, if your toxins go into your vital organs like your heart, they can actually cause permanent irreversible damage. So your body is like, okay, let me just, you know, park them and keep them in safe spaces, which is fat and not let the toxins harm you. So... And we've seen this in a lot of cases that it's actually the toxins that somebody is exposed to or is currently being exposed to that's causing that weight gain. So helping somebody detox. And detox is not about juice fast or <laughs> cleanses. Detoxification actually is a far more scientific process uh, which, which requires activation of your phase zero to phase four pathways and it needs binders, it needs... Uh, herbs like dandelion root and all that push toxins out of the liver. So, um, I mean, to do detox, I'll have to do a separate one-hour webinar, but toxins can be the root cause of a lot of people's weight gain. So you will see, right, it's not just about keeping your calories low because if weight loss was just about starving yourself and uh, not eating food, everyone would be thin. But look at already the number of reasons we've covered. None of these reasons are that, like, except for this one, right, where if your eating habits are just a lot of uh, calorie-dense uh, processed and junk and sugary foods. Apart from that, there are so many other reasons that beyond just eating too much food can be a trigger for weight gain. And that's why most people who go on diets where it's just low calories or low fat, never really see the kind of changes you're supposed to see because there could be some other root cause that's triggering that extra weight. Okay, so we covered thyroid, liver, we covered adrenal dysfunction, we looked at toxin overload. Why are we even discussing obesity, right? Why are we even talking about this? For me, it's not really about the aesthetics. I am the least likely person to, um, like, if, if any of you are following me on Instagram, I don't, I don't really care about the uh, aesthetics, whether you're like India's thinnest person or not. But what I know for sure is if you have clinical obesity, like even a small amount of fat, right, extra fat on your body, on its own releases inflammatory compounds, right? Like fat can release something called as lipopolysaccharides, which are inflammatory and which can further create inflammation. So when you have extra fat stored on your body beyond what is really needed for your body to function optimally, it can then result in a lot of other additional complications. So including uh, issues with blood pressure, including issues with uh, heart, like you, you could, it could lead to heart problems because of the constant inflammation that's going on. Obesity and gout is interrelated. Um, Arthritis and obesity is interrelated. The quality of life goes down, right? So there's a lot of clinically negative outcomes that are a result of uh, someone being beyond their ideal body fat composition. And that's why we're really discussing. Why do most people fail to lose weight? Um, you know, you, you decide to lose weight. You're like, okay, I, I just want to lose weight. Christmas is coming up. Diwali is coming up. And after Diwali, Christmas will come up. And after Christmas, you'll have New Year's. So you just say that I want to lose weight until this day. 
um, what most people do is they go on a diet. When you go on a diet, you eat much lesser than you were eating before. Um, and then you'll start losing weight initially, right? Like first you'll lose like maybe a few kgs. Then what happens is your body is not getting enough energy because you're eating very few calories. When that happens, the body is like, oh, I'm not getting enough food. I don't know when I'm going to get enough food in the future. Let me start saving up some food in the form of fats. Or in the future, you know, if this person doesn't get access to food, at least saved food will be there. Stored food will be there. I, I, I'm packing my food and keeping it inside my body. Okay, so it starts storing food. Then you think, oh, I need to cut down on calories even more. You'll eat lesser. Your metabolism becomes slower. By now, because of all of this drama happening, your thyroid has gotten messed up. Your adrenals have gotten messed up because they are experiencing chronic stress. Your weight though is stagnating. And you start feeling really frustrated and powerless because you're not even eating. You're doing so much. You're being so mindful of what you're eating. And nothing is happening. Then you lose your motivation. Then you like, fuck this shit, right? Like you don't want to do this. So you'll be like, it's not working anyway. Why should I? It's like a lot of people go into this uh, YOLO thing. Like you only live once and ekhi to zindagi hai, khao, pio, khush rao, and all of that. So you lose your motivation. Like you lo lose the initial intent that you had. And you'll just go back to eating whatever you were eating. And then your body is able to build up new fat reserves. And then like whatever initial weight loss that you saw in those two, three uh, kgs, it all comes back or it comes back even more viciously at a higher weight form. So this is what happens to most people when they attempt to lose weight. It becomes a really vicious cycle. And for me, what is really even more concerning is that it's no longer an adult problem, right? Like when I was young, when I was a kid, I didn't have any friends who were obese. The only obese people I saw were like the uncles and aunties in my family. And they also like, there weren't too many of those also. Now, there are so many children who are severely obese. And these children have such negative clinical outcomes as they become adults, right? Like so many complications that are, uh, like that, that just make their quality of life worse. We saw... Even in COVID, we saw people who were like clinically obese, people who had higher insulin resistance, people who had poor metabolic health actually had really fatal outcomes when, when they contracted COVID, right? So it's it's super important that this, this function that's, that's known as obesity is treated how we treat any other health condition by finding the root cause of it and then creating the appropriate food plan around it and then helping the person lose weight. Now, what is the way out, right? How do you do this? You, see, this is what we practice. We figure out what is the root cause, right? We see if it's insulin resistance. We find out if it's an adrenal dysfunction. We figure out if the liver is dysfunctional. Whatever the root cause, we first identify that. And then we customize the food you're supposed to eat, right? It's not just about like eating cabbage soup and uh, cucumber and apple. It's really about understanding what is going on inside this body. What are the conditions that need to be resolved? And then resolving those conditions one day at a time. And doing it in a very holistic way, right? Like doing it in a way where uh, uh, people don't feel overwhelmed and uh, people don't start feeling uh, like this is just too much to do. And I, I'll talk about what the holistic healing philosophy is also about. And it's very research-based, right? So we do this we we analyze blood markers we look at your blood test and we see what is really going on to figure out how to help someone lose weight the thing is there is no one size fits all okay it is impossible to create a perfect weight loss plan that we could give to everybody who needed to lose weight but but for those of you attending this webinar we want to give you some takeaways that if you apply these I can guarantee you will see some amount of weight loss, right? The first step is to eliminate seed oils. What are seed oils? Seed oils are all the vegetable oils that are currently being marketed as heart-healthy oils in the market, right? So from 
sunflower oil, safflower oil, rice bran oil, mustard oil, sesame oil. All of these oils are not something that you should be putting into your body. These oils are the ones that create insulin resistance. Eliminate these oils, replace them with ghee. I know you, you're wondering how can ghee result in weight loss. But eliminate vegetable oils, seed oils, anything that's coming from a plant in terms of an oil is not healthy except for coconut oil because coconut oil is saturated fat. So the only fats that I would recommend you cook with is either ghee, coconut oil, butter. You will see like so much change happens like within two, three weeks of eliminating seed oils. The second thing that we would recommend that I have personally seen is really effective in helping lose anyone lose weight is just cut off all processed food. Now, what are processed food? Processed foods are foods that are really far away from natural food, right? So, high fiber biscuits, for example, things like digestive biscuits, really, really bad. They are not going to help you lose weight. And I, I, I have seen so many dietitians and nutritionists uh, prescribe, like, you know, in the evening, have one cup of tea with two digestive biscuits. It's like the worst thing to give to a person who's trying to lose weight. These processed foods are going to make weight loss even more difficult. So anything that has been put on the shelves with a shelf life of maybe more than two, three days, like your biscuits and your farsan and these namkeens and the chivda and chocolates, these are not going to create health, right? So eliminate processed foods, eat real natural food like eggs and meat and some vegetables and fruits and these are really great. Control your carbohydrate intake in the sense, understand where you are at in terms of your insulin signaling, right? So if you have very, very high levels of insulin resistance, it would be good to kind of bring down your carbs a little bit until that insulin resistance is reversed. Uh, if you have type 1 diabetes, actually, um, then carbohydrates really need to be controlled. And my recommendation in terms of controlling carbohydrate intake is like, first, eat your protein along with the fat, right? So whether you're using ghee or coconut oil or butter, eat the protein that's going to be your main source of uh, like the satiety or the protein makes you feel fuller for longer. If you have some space, you can eat some carbs. And I usually recommend like not going more than one portion, right? So maybe one bhakri or um, one portion of rice. Um, avoid binge eating. It's easy for me to say. I, I do know why binge eating happens. A lot of it has the emotional component to it. And we'll talk about emotions in a little bit. I'm just quickly talking of like the things that you can do with food. Um, include dietary supplements like magnesium. Um, I can't even tell you the 3,000 different ways in which magnesium really works inside our body and supports our system, including modulation of the glucose transport, including helping with insulin resistance. Um, it's a really, really important mineral that our body is super deficient in because our food supply and our water supply has been altered. It's right, no longer naturally providing magnesium to us. So magnesium is one nutrient that I recommend everyone takes. Even if you're not like obese, even if you're not trying to lose weight, magnesium is a nutrient that everyone should be taking. Vitamin D is an important nutrient too because it plays a really important role in how glucose signaling is happening. Chromium is a mineral, uh, but before you supplement with chromium, I would recommend you get your blood work done to see if you really need chromium. But it actually improves how insulin functions. So if insulin resistance is the root cause of your weight gain, chromium might help there. Uh, there are other herbs, right? Like actual herbs, so fenugreek seeds, um, and then uh, berberine and uh, biogymnema. These are the herbs that really help bring down blood sugar levels and thereby uh, preventing insulin resistance uh, driven obesity. So increase protein intake, keep your carbohydrate intake low and instead of vegetable oils, start having uh, ghee, butter and then coconut oil. How do you check if you have insulin? Because you see, in, in the work that we've done so far, right, 
what we've seen in terms of weight, like the people who have excess weight, it's either insulin resistance or the thyroid or the liver. These three are predominant causes of why someone could have excess weight. And how do you check for insulin resistance? These are the few tests that we do, like when we want to check for insulin resistance. Fasting and postprandial, and postprandial we do within one hour. So fasting and postprandial, blood glucose levels, fasting and postprandial, insulin levels. Then HbA1c, C-peptide, and we check for serum triglycerides. So if you're, if you're um, you know, if you're experiencing a lot of sweet craving, if you're experiencing a lot of, uh, or if, if you start experiencing like, uh, you know, uh, irritation and anger and shaky, uh, like just a lot of jitteriness, if you miss a meal, uh, mood swings, if you miss a meal and you're gaining weight, it would be a good idea to kind of check your insulin resistance and see if that's really at the root of it. Uh, also, we spoke of like the basic tips you could do in terms of food, but physical activity is super important when it comes to uh, helping your body work with its weight better. Okay, so I'm not necessarily saying that exercise is the way out for weight loss. You can't out-exercise a bad diet, right? Like if you're eating a seed oil dominant uh, junk food pill diet there's no amount of exercise that's going to make you lose weight but moving around like you know just a lot of physical activity moving through the day definitely helps in better utilization of energies and uh, things like squats and deadlifts actually are huge glucose things they, they'll use up a lot of glucose from the bloodstream so even if you have insulin resistance your glucose utilization gets better seed oils i already spoke about um Seeds, seed oils actually have too much polyunsaturated fatty acid, which is not good for us. Sleep, again, very, very important if you're uh, attempting to lose weight because if you don't get enough rest, your uh, adrenal system, your stress response system doesn't get a uh, break. And if that's not happening, weight is going to stay. And then stress management itself, right? Um, see, it's not like stress is not going to happen. We, we are human beings. The only way we really evolve is when we are challenged, right? So every time a challenge comes, if we are able to learn and grow and adapt to that, we evolve. And stress is nothing but that challenge. Now, for a lot of people, they don't know their personal window of tolerance. They don't know how much challenge is something that's going to create optimal performance and how much challenge is going to make them crash. And most people are living in their crash zone very few people are actually in their optimal challenge zone when you are in your crash zone and when you don't have the right tools and techniques to kind of deal with the stressors that are coming at you you are going to be in the state of chronic stress and that state of chronic stress also can trigger weight gain so it's important to learn tools and techniques that will help you manage your stress okay so the, the, while the slides are over, I actually want to share a few more insights on uh, why even if uh, we lose weight, right? Like in my, my own case, right? Like why even after weight loss, sometimes you can end up gaining weight again. So for me, initially that weight loss and maintaining it, like I, I lost weight in 2017. Somebody had asked a question um, how much time did you lose? 37 kgs. I think I took a year. I, I don't know the exact timeline, but 2017 is when I learned about functional medicine and I started quickly losing weight. And then by 2018, early 2018, I had lost that weight. So I lost that weight and I kept it off. I, I was at 60 kgs until uh, nearly uh, November, December last year. And um, of course, like for me, what happened was, and I've spoken about this somewhere, I don't know if it was a webinar or if it was the academy itself. I was exposed to a toxin. I was exposed to a really harmful chemical and that chemical kind of triggered uh, the entire mechanism of like my fat body using fat cells to kind of trap the toxin and keep it inside. Now that happened, all of that happened. So I kind of gained a little weight and then I knew I had to like cut down grains and like, go into a ketogenic mode to kind of burn that fat and then do a lot of detoxification, use binders and all to bind that and release it. But I was finding it hard to do that, right? I was finding it really hard. So I'd, like somebody would bring something inter interesting in office, like somebody would have really nice dabba and I'd just eat and I'd keep thinking, okay, I'll start from tomorrow. 
and then i realized that that start from tomorrow is is what happens in a lot of people's head like they might lose weight they might gain it gain it back like maybe a little just because of some life incident that happened but coming back on track becomes difficult because everyone's thinking that okay like you know today i did something wrong and i'll start tomorrow without realizing that tomorrow is actually a myth there is no tomorrow right it is the choices that you are making today that's going to create an alternate future all that happens what we think of as tomorrow is basically our body gets tired the sun goes down we rest and we sleep and we wake up to another day now if you make the same choices that you made the previous day it's the same today that's repeating so you're literally living in a today loop like you know these movies the groundhog day and all movies where people are just waking up in the same day over and again that's what we end up doing when we can't make changes to our food habit so this is where understanding the mindset understanding the uh, frameworks understanding the belief systems understanding people's relationship with food what is food used for um and food can actually like the the comfort food philosophy while people use it as a bad label it's 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 not wrong okay like some foods really comfort you like if you're going through an emotional crisis if you're going through a traumatic phase there are some foods that will ground you and that they will make you feel better and there is no harm in turning to comfort foods when you need food as a grounding experience just that if your comfort food is cake and if you're eating cake every day because you're emotionally in a traumatic place then you are going to end up gaining weight right so the goal would be to understand what's the root of the trauma to work with your emotions to create mental better mental frameworks and then resolve that instead of always turning to food as comfort zone but like when i go abroad and when i travel a lot of out of india and when i come back home na i really want to eat like what my mom used to make when i was a kid which was this varan bhat soup like i'm a maharashtrian right so that plain yellow dal with rice soft rice with ghee on it it's it's really my comfort food and that's what i crave for when i when i've eaten too much outside food and i just come back home now that's very carb heavy right that's very grain heavy i eat it but i'll go back and start eating what is better for me from the next day sometimes but a lot of people get stuck in that next day next day next day loop and then they don't make good choices on the day that they are actually there in they're breathing and they're living and they're just eating anything right now because they think they have this tomorrow wala bit to change their food habits so that's something that um i don't know how many of you experiences i mean i'll get to the questions i see a lot of questions there but how many of you have gone through this tomorrow loop like okay chalo you'll wake up in the morning you'll check your weight and you'll think shit like today is when i'm going to uh, start eating better and the first half of the day also you might do that and you know something will happen somebody will say something or there's like a meeting or something happens with your kids and it's just like a moment of stress and you might go for something that's really tempting or just temptation might come you might see something on tv or you might read something or something might show up in your insta or facebook feed zomato ads are really brilliant and uh, you might end up ordering something thinking that tomorrow i'll change my diet how many of you have experienced this yeah there are raising a hand you, you can use that zoom thing to do hand raises there is something like that i've seen it once so there are a lot of us who go through that right and it's important to understand that that tomorrow will never come and that's why i like the blood test work that we do because when you look at your blood test data it's no longer just about the number on the weighing scale it's no longer about the clothes that don't fit it's no longer about looking at the mirror and not liking what you see you have real time evidence of what's happening inside your body your brain registers that the minute your brain registers that kind of information you will see a very direct intrinsic motivation to want to make a change to how you're eating and then the way we've designed our program also because it was based on a lot of my own journey in terms of trying to lose weight how i would feel very alone trying to make these changes nobody in the family was doing that none of my friends were really attempting to fix their health and i didn't even know whom to ask some questions that right? i have to go and research it all over again for myself 
That's why we designed the work we do, like the three month program where we have accountability partners, health coaches, people are talking to you all the day, sharing recipes and all that. That's like that. That's why that program is designed like that. But what really makes the change is like when you look at your blood work and see this is what is really going on. It's not my lack of willpower. It is not. I'm not an overeater, but I have an insulin resistance problem or I have a thyroid issue and that's why my body is gaining weight. When you see that also, right, a huge burden is taken off your shoulders. So that's why I like the work we do, right? Like it, it just feels so good to know what is at the root of your uh, weight gain. Anyway, before we run out of time, uh, how much time do I answered that question? Do you have nutrition courses? Yes, Vibhavari. We actually have an academy where we teach functional nutrition over a four month uh, period. So um, you could learn, you could learn this, like even how to interpret blood tests and to see what is at the root cause. We actually teach people that. Can hypothyroidism cause weight loss? Uh, no. So hypothyroidism won't cause weight loss. Often hyperthyroidism masked under hypo can be causing the weight loss, right? So your T3 and T4 might look like your thyroid is not functioning well. Uh, and doctors can assume that that is hypothyroidism. Uh, but if you look at your uh, free TSH, you will see that uh, like we've seen this pattern in some cases, like they think they have hypothyroidism because free T3, free T4 are low. Uh, but actually the root is the thyroid is actually going in overdrive and it's hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism causes weight loss it, because it increases the metabolism and it has like many other problems also that it cause palpitations and everything. But uh, hypo doesn't cause weight loss. It's hyper that causes weight loss. Suggest any supplements, please, of magnesium and vitamin D. We have our own supplement line. So, I, I mean, I, I've been having magnesium supplements since 2017 when I first got into functional medicine. And I, I like, I'm, I'm not just bragging, not because I thrive is like yeah. our company. No, does, does I thrive have its separate? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. We do, we do. And we, We've seen really excellent reviews come for the magnesium that we are making. No, actually, ma'am, like I've been taking vitamin D supplements, but I did not find any change. So I, I was really keen in knowing what supplements you would suggest. Yeah, yeah. I think, Ronit, you can send the link to the Essentials website. You, you just take the i thrive magnesium, you'll see a huge, many, many things. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, uh rashmi is in the currently i i will start tomorrow zone there is no tomorrow rashmi all that you have is your today so you start now like after this call whatever you're going to eat for dinner is 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 what is going to stay start it's it's these small habits and these small actions that increment uh, incrementally compound over time right so what you're doing today is going to create a future outcome your health is a lagging outcome of your choices of today. If you're going to do what is wrong for your health, your future health is going to show that to you. So unlike, and it, it's a, it's a long-term lagging effect, right? So it's not even like you ate, you did something today and instantly tomorrow things are going to get messed up. Um, you Like when you walk into a glass door, you get hurt on your head and you learn that lesson immediately that, oh, I shouldn't do this because it causes pain. Versus eating a little sugar and eating like a small piece of pizza or eating something like that. And then not really seeing the outcome immediately. Like nothing's going to pain immediately. But over a year, that same choice every single day is going to create a huge problem. Absolutely, Ankit. Uh, it feels like uh, I, I wait for that little stress so I can avoid exercising. So like like you're looking for excuses, like, oh, the stressor is there and that's why I want to skip exercising. I think that's what you're trying to say. Don't do that. Like make exercise and movement one of the priorities. Uh, Nagendra, you have shared good info. Thank you. Thank you, Nagendra. Uh, please do sub sub suggest. I think we spoke about the supplements just now. Root cause analysis is something many people miss during the weight loss journey. Absolutely. And that's why people try things like People will do intermittent fasting. People will do keto without really understanding if that's okay for their body or not. Right? Somebody who is in a state of adrenal dysfunction, if you do intermittent fasting, you're going to push your body into a higher state of stress. 
and then it's going to become even more difficult to lose weight so um unless you find out what's going inside i wouldn't recommend any approach to weight loss except the few things that i recommended earlier which is like seed oils and processed food um uh i am taking magnesium but i still have sleep issues chronic insomnia um uh, could be tied to many things samira so for me when it comes to insomnia i really like going deeper and checking what's going on um because sometimes insomnia could be driven by anxiety patterns also um like if if you have looping anxiety thoughts it's it's really going to become hard for you to fall asleep um other things also right like neurotransmitters your gaba maybe your melatonin production has dropped or maybe you're exposed to too much blue light like the light in this room and that's why sleep is becoming an issue so insomnia has many other root causes not the ones that we discussed in today's conversation um uh, gluten free diet works yes it works it works priyanka but for a lot of people trying to go gluten free without support in terms of recipes and someone like this saying it's okay and here's what you can try it becomes difficult because insidiously gluten has become like the most predominantly consumed like wheat has become the most predominantly consumed uh, grain in indian society what do you suggest when we go outside any small suggestions so i was outside for example i was in bangalore all day for a, a conference um and it was very easy for me to pick what was right from the buffet so for lunch i just picked some like i eat meat i i just picked like mutton kebabs which were like just very very clean they were just made in a tandoor there was no oil applied on that and um uh, i i there were some fruits so i ate fruits i ate mutton kebabs for lunch for dinner there was fish so i just ate salmon And Mom, can you tell vegetarian options? Like, if if at all, sorry, like, yeah. Yeah. So, see, the thing with the uh, vegetarian options outside, very very limited uh, in terms of healthy options. But here is what I would eat if I went outside and if I was like experimenting with the vegetarian phase. Um, idlis are safe because they're cooked without oil. Um, or if you're eating dosas, you can ask them to make dosas and butter. uh if you're going for a main course if you're going to eat like um, if you're going to eat lunch or dinner then rice based dishes right so you could do like uh, a dal khichdi or with with ghee on top uh but it's a very high carb but that, that that's the best option instead of eating naans and all those greasy gravies and curries um yes, you could also choose like if you're going to maybe a um, um eastern cuisine kind of a place na no? uh, southeast yeah. cuisine you could do like thai curries and rice if okay. you go to a, a continental place um it becomes really hard because everything is cooked, like all the white sauces and everything are like just so much gluten and maida madam But, like do you suggest dairy products like paneer uh, like are you okay with it so paneer and dairy we didn't put it in our generic recommendations but quite a few people are dairy sensitive right like lactose yeah, yeah, yeah. or casein it can cause gas and bloating and then that inflammation can make your weight loss even harder so okay, unless okay. you're sure that dairy is working well for you or not i i don't recommend dairy so what we do is we eliminate dairy for a few days and then we bring it back to people's diet okay 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 mama okay. thank you so much uh taking thyroxin 50 mg and unable to lose weight and i eat well what can be done i would recommend you get your blood work done and see what is really going on do dairy products increase weight case specific not in all cases but if someone is dairy sensitive if someone is really having trouble with dairy it can cause weight gain because of inflammation uh yes amira so it, you for anxiety there are many different things that can be done uh along with like looking at food and mental patterns and everything can you tell me soluble fiber and insoluble fiber um so what do you want to know about soluble fiber and insoluble fiber if you can elaborate that question telepathy that would be really great i have ra is it true i should avoid yes absolutely dhara keep gluten and dairy out of your diet you'll see a resolution of your ra uh, resolution in the sense like symptoms will become lesser but what we've seen with ra in our work is like ra is caused by a bacteria called klebsiella there are enough research papers also and we've seen this also in the test that we've done so to really reverse ra 
it becomes important to bring down that klebsiella infection once that klebsiella infection goes the inflammation around your joints arthritis is basically joint inflammation that comes down the autoimmune component is taken away because the bacteria itself is eliminated uh how can i enroll for consultation ronak you can send the consultation link kindly suggest healthy alternatives for sugar stevia mon fruit extract so if if you if you are not diabetic if you don't have insulin resistance you can actually use raw organic honey or uh, date paste also as a sugar alternative i use raw organic honey in my coffee or tea but if you are diabetic and like you know right now blood sugar levels are all over the place and you want to keep them low then maybe a few drops of stevia is okay but not too much uh i'm also unable to drink more water one glass of water in a 3 hour ratio work for me that that is because of uh, insulin resistance and extra glucose in the blood stream so when you have too much glucose in your body your body either converts it into triglycerides and stores it as fast as fat or your body is going to dump it out of the body now when your body is attempting to dump glucose out of your kidneys water goes along with it right so a lot of people who have insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes or often have a condition called polyuria which is excess urination this is a classic symptom of insulin resistance i would recommend you get your blood work done and see what's going on soy products i don't recommend soy at all uh, priya sharini because um, soy most of the soy that is available now is highly genetically modified it's like gmo and our body doesn't do well with genetically modified foods okay they are not something our body knows how to process secondly soy products also have a lot of anti nutrients like uh, phytoestrogens lectins phytates oxalates so so many anti nutrients that trigger further inflammation so i we we don't recommend soy at all to anyone uh should non veg be avoided in ra no you don't need to avoid non veg okay but like for ra it's better to get to the root and see what is really going on so this question mariam i really can't answer uh, uh, no i can't answer this question right now whether you should stop taking your thyroidorm it's better to get your blood work done and then see what is like the root cause of your thyroid issues itself and yes functional medicine can treat pcod and endometrial uh, thickness also um uh, what is your input regarding if like i said if your body is experiencing adrenal dysfunction or is experiencing chronic stress in that time putting your body through intermittent fasting is going to create more of a stress response and it might not trigger weight loss at all so that's my approach to if again uh, men and women respond differently to intermittent fasting women uh, don't do very well with long fast because that starts impacting our, impacting our thyroid depending also on our menstrual cycle right like around the time when we are going to menstruate when we are going to have a period we need more energy uh, so if actually so uh, with, with if you have to be really careful like so many other factors to look at it has to be administered properly suggest more veg protein sources i i, I don't believe vegetarian veg has too many protein sources uh, should you be taking phytoestrogen foods in menopause no if uric acid is high then what protein to include high protein diets are not the root cause of uric acid problems uric acid problems are caused by many other things including uh, insulin resistance or too much of oxidative stress so the entire philosophy that too much protein one last is, question yeah um uh, do you people have a uh, uh, for function with functional training do you people you know solve the problem called varicose seal have you heard of it varicose seal no vari varicose seal we can't solve because that's a physiological issue where like water has yes, yes. yeah 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 i we can't we can prevent that happening in the future, future but we can't okay. solve something that's already happening okay ma'am thank you all right So I think we are over time. Uh, if you have any more questions, you could email them, and then uh, Ronit can kind of see if we can get the team to answer those. But those of you who are here, thank you so much for being here and attending this. Like we just want to share knowledge. I hope you guys found value in the session and some takeaways from this. Um, I think the next one we are doing is before Diwali. We are going to focus a lot on uh, because that 
that month is also mental health awareness month we're going to do a session on uh, depression decoded like looking at the root cause of depression what really causes it um of course we'll put it out on our social media handles and we'll share that link even with this group that's formed um, but do join in and um, yeah thank you so much for being here thank have you. a good night and a very happy weekend. thank you ma'am good night thank you so much almost with you Thank you ma'am it was so good thank you all right good night good night